Hi guys, this is Andrew with RockClass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're going to be learning an original tune that I wrote, which I'm calling Wonder. Now, you may wonder why I'm calling it Wonder. Well, I think if we listen to a little bit of it... It has a bit of a whimsical sound to it. And that kind of made me think of wonder. Now, as far as playing wise, I think this is a really great song for the intermediate player. And the reason why is that there are some techniques that are being used that are great for that level. The first of which is piccato technique, which is literally just an alternate finger picking technique that goes second first, second first, second first. And it's a really cool way to build speed in playing single note melody lines. And you can see it being used in that first melody. Right, sounds cool, makes the melody notes pop, and it's a really efficient way to play. There's also a Rascato strum, which is literally just a four finger barrel roll strum, which goes pinky, ring, middle, index. And that just makes the, strum, the chords pop as well. And it's a really cool way to accent chords. Now, both of those techniques, piccato and rascato, are taught in complete detail in our lesson, which is called, I'll put the spelling up here, La Hitanita. I'm going to put the link in the description box below. So if you want to check out that lesson to learn the mechanics behind doing that plus piccato, definitely do check it out because this lesson will move forward with the assumption you know how to do them. Now, this melody also I think the first melody that I just played, it has a bit of a renaissance kind of sound. And this song actually has two additional melodies, a melody B and a melody C as well. And both of those sound a lot more modern. So it's kind of a, this song is like a, a hodgepodge of old school sounding meets new school sounding. So I think there's gonna be something for everyone. And as we work our way into those next two melodies, they use a lot more traditional finger picking and traditional strumming. So it's a good uh, general overview of intermediate level playing. And it's just a lot of fun. Now, let's talk about the lesson really quick before we jump into learning the tune. So in this video, we're gonna be learning the entire song, but if you wanna get the tabs to print off and follow along with, you can do so by clicking this link or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for Wonder. Now also on that page will be the on-screen tab viewer, which is super cool. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play and you can watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into learning this tune. The first thing is that we're playing in three four. So That means we have three beats per measure. So one, two, three, next measure. One, two, three, next measure. So we're not playing in four four, so that's the big thing. So playing in three four. Now, we're going to be counting rhythms as we go throughout this piece. So if you're new to understanding rhythmic notation, I'll put a link to an introductory lesson that I have in the description box below. But honestly, guys, there's no better way to really understand how rhythm and timing connect than by learning to read standard notation. So check out our reading course. So one thing I want to talk about before we jump into the A melody is that it's written using double stops. Double stop is just a fancy terminology that means you're playing two notes at the same time. Now this is a contrast from playing a chord because a chord means we're playing three or more notes together. So if I play the first couple bars, check out that on beat one, it's two notes together. It's a double stop. 
Okay, so I have one, two, and three, one, two, three. So on beat one for both bars, you can see that I'm plucking string four and one. Now, if I was to contrast that and play the chord, most of us can figure out what chord this first one is, just a C. And the next one is pretty obvious to see as well. It's a G chord. Now, if I contrast this and play the strum of the chord for beat one instead, it sounds like this. Which sounds good, but in terms of this piece of music, it's very sparse. It's a very simple melody. And that sounds a lot better. So I think for the context of this song, less is more. So anyways, I wanted to throw that out. So this first A melody, every first beat is a double stop hit. And it's kind of a cool approach if you like to song write. So you don't always have to use a chord. Sometimes you can do a double stop instead and get a different sound. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into learning it. I'm going to play bar one, and then we'll break it down and learn it. So the rhythm is one, two, and three. So one, two, and three. Now that's one of two rhythms that happen in the A melody. We have literally a rhythmic theme. We have either this rhythm, one, two, and three, or we have all quarter notes, which we'll see in bar two, which is literally just one, two, three. So keep that in mind too, as we work through this A melody. So go ahead and start with the index on the third fret of string one. We're going to pluck that with the open G. Now, as far as your right hand picking approach is concerned, you can do one of two ways. You can do a four finger approach where thumb gets string four, index is string three, middle is string two, ring is string one. Or you can do a three finger approach where thumb gets four and three, index gets string two, middle gets string one. So either or works. I'll let you pick which one is best for you. So we're gonna pluck four and one together then hit the open C, and then walk a melody line up string one. So take that ring finger, put it on five, and then pinky goes on seven. So you have pluck, four and one, open C, then we have five, sev. So I have one, two, and three. Okay, so let's see if we can try that really slow. One, two, and three. Pretty simple, right? If we move into measure number two, it sounds like this. So here's the rhythmic theme of quarter notes. So one, two, three. So even simpler. So all you have to do is move that index down a half step and you're on the second fret of string one, pluck that with the open G and then take the middle, put it on third fret of string two and then lift it up, play the open E. So let's see if we can try that quarter notes. One, two, three. Nice. And the first and the second one together sound like this. All right. So you, another way you can approach this is by playing by ear. Da, 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 ba, ba, ba. Right, if you can sing it, you can play it, but you can also approach it by counting it. One, two, and three, one, two, three. So both ways are great to work on. So let's see if we can try measure one into measure two. One, two, and three. Nice. Now from here, we're gonna be playing out of an F, but it's a double stop, so we only need one finger. We're gonna use the index finger for the first fret of string two, but you can see that it's just straight out of that basic F chord. So take that index, put it on first fret of string two, and this is what the third measure sounds like. So we're back to one, two, and three. So I am going to do a different attack for the first hit. I'm going to strum with the nail of my index finger, string three and two. Now, if you don't like that, you can pluck those two. That's totally fine. But give the strum a shot and try to target the strum so it only hits string three and two. Another tip you can do is with the index finger, lightly touch the first string, right? So this, it, I'm on my fingertip the bottom part of the index finger lightly touches the first string. And that means that if I strum too far, it's going to mute it, right? So if I'm directly on a fingertip, it'll ring out. But if I'm on fingertip and the fingers curve down a little bit, it touches right there. 
and that's what's going to mute that first string. So an extra little tip. So again, I'm gonna strum three to two with the knell of the index finger. Then I'm gonna play the open C, followed up by the third fret of string two, and then the open A. So I have, okay, rhythmically, one, two, and three. All right, so let's see if we can try that one slow. So one, two, and three, strum, three, two, oh. One more time without me counting, one, two, and three. Nice. As we go into measure four, we're back to quarter notes. And it's our favorite chord because there's nothing to fret. So we're just gonna be playing opens. So we have open four and open two. We're gonna pluck that and then the open C twice. So we have one, two, three. And try not to hit that C as hard as I just did because it will pop really loud. So remember the C string is the thickest string and it tends to ring with the most volume. So just be a little bit cognitive of how hard you're plucking it. Okay, so there's that measure. Let's try together. One, two, three. Cool, if we try three into four, it sounds like this. you and I. One, two, three. Cool. If we backtrack, one into four. One, two, go. Very good. Now, as we move into measure five, we're going to need one finger again to, to fret this. So take that middle finger, put it on the second fret of string three, and I'm gonna do that same strum approach with the nail of the index finger, but this time I'm hitting string four and three. Again, if you don't like that, you can pluck it. That's totally fine. Rhythmically, we're back to one, two, and three. So we're going to make it sound like this. Okay, so strum four to three, then we're going to walk a melody line up the E string. It's gonna be the open E, the first fret, and then the third fret. And here's where we can start to use the piccato. So I have strum, piccato technique. So strum with the index, then we can pluck middle, first, middle, right? So strum, middle, first, middle. Rhythmically, one, two, and three, okay? Let's see if we can try that together slow. One, two, and three. Nice. Going into the sixth measure, same approach, but we're literally just gonna be dropping down a set of strings. So this time around, we're going to strum second to first. Both of them are open. So again, strum second to first, and then piccato picking, starting on the second fret of the A string. We're gonna go two, three, five. So we have strum two, three, five. So let's try that, keeping with that same one, two, and three. So back to back bars of one, two, and three here. So let's just try measure six by itself. One, two, go. One, two, and three. One more time without me counting. One, two, and three. Nice. Backtrack five into six. One, two, and three. Very good. Now going into measure seven and eight, this is ending one because the A melody is going to repeat. So this is your first ending and it's gonna sound like this. So in this part, we have the raschiato, right? But this raschiato, as you're noticing, is being played with three strings. So what gives? I thought we we're playing double stops. Well, Technically, this B flat that we're playing out of is still only two notes because the third and the first string is just a unison, I'm sorry, an octave of the exact same note. So we only have two notes here, hence the reason that's a B flat five, which is a power chord, which is and again a fancy term that says it's the first and the fifth out of B flat. So still two notes. So we're, we're still keeping with that double stop theme. So for this, I'm gonna use that 
Rasgiarostrom, which is uh, taught in that flamenco lesson. So be sure to check that one out in the description box below if you're new to doing this four finger barrel roll strum. But to form this chord, take the index, put it on five on string three, middle is six on string two, pinky is eight on string one. Keep this chord shape in mind because we're literally going to move it down the neck in just a second to play a different chord. So again, five, six, eight, third string down. And we can use that same approach that we talked about for muting a string. Remember how we muted the first string? Well, we can use the index finger to touch with the very tip right underneath the nail, the fingertip, to touch string four. So if you strum the fourth string down, you won't hear it. So these little tricks for muting come in handy for cleaning up our playing. Now, this measure sounds like this. So rhythmically, we're staying with the one, two, and three. So we had three bars of it in a row. Okay, so we're gonna strum third string down, followed up by playing string three, then get rid of the pinky, put your ring down on seven on string one, and then get rid of the ring finger, and we're going to play five on string one. So this actually brings up a good point that I forgot to mention. This B flat five, while it can be fingered in the beginning more so on a fingertip, it's actually better if you do this as a partial bar chord. And partial bar chord just means that we're barring less than four strings, right? So a full bar chord would be barring all four strings. Partial bar chord would be barring three strings or two strings. So in this case, let's re-examine how to form this chord. If we take the index finger and lay flat on that fifth fret from the third string down, you can see that it's now a partial bar chord. We're ignoring string four. So it's a partial bar chord of three strings. Then we can add the other two fingers back down. Okay, now we already know with this measure that we're going to do the Roscoe strum followed up by string three, then seven on one. When we lift up that ring finger to play five on one, it's already barred. So we don't have any extra work to do with our left hand. So that's probably the, or that is the way that you should approach playing this. Just move into position to create the partial bar. So if you think of the last measure, six into seven, as I walk my way up with the pinky, you can see that I'm just going to go ahead and already lay into that bar chord. Okay, now this actually brings up another good point because this transition is kind of hard. So you may want to practice anything that is tricky, which for example, I think six to seven is probably the hardest one. So one, two, and three. When you finish measure six and it goes up to the next one, look at the pinky finger. It's just gonna move up and then the other two fingers come down with the partial bar. So you can just loop that little section to get the muscle memory down. So again, let's try this seventh measure. We have one, two, and three. So here we go. One, two, and three. Cool. Now to finish it up, keep the bar chord intact. We're going to take the pinky, put it on eight on string two. Now at this point, make sure you're not touching the fourth string to mute it. So we gotta move that, scooch that index finger down a touch if you are, because we need to pluck the eighth fret of string two with the open G. Okay, so you're gonna pluck those together. After that, you're going to lift these two fingers up, play the fifth fret, which is barred, on string two, and then the seventh fret on string two. So you have one, two, three. So we're back to quarters for the last measure. Okay? Putting it together it makes a little bit more sense, seven into eight. Okay? So get that stuck in your head. And let's see if we can try just measure eight by itself. So you left off with just the bar and the middle finger down, add the pinky to eight on string two, pluck with the open G, lift those two fingers up, five, seven on string two. So we have one, two, three. Let's try. One, two, three. Nice. 
And if we backtrack, let's try seven into eight. One, two, three. Cool. And if we try the last four bars, five to eight, sounds like this. One, two, three. Very good. Now let's cycle through all eight bars and then we're going to talk about ending number two because the A melody repeats. But if we try all eight and I'll boost the tempo just a little bit, sounds like this. One, two, three. Now, this is going to repeat, and when you repeat, you're going to play the same six bars again. What I like to do when I repeat is to start the first one with a strum, just to give it a different sound. But the rest, you can see, I go back into the uh, double stop approach. Continuing on, bar five, bar six, and then you get to ending number two. And this is replacing measure seven and eight. So it sounds like this. So all quarter notes. Right, and it's just a variation out of that B flat that we're playing out of. So again, start with the B flat with the partial bar intact. And for the ninth measure, this is measure nine on the tab if you're on, we're going to strum with the Ross Gouter hit then play the third string, then get rid of the pinky, put the ring finger onto seven. So same stuff we saw before, but the rhythm is one, two, three. So all quarters. Strum, third string, seven on string one. So let's try it again. One, two, go. Nice. At this point, going into the last measure, lift the ring finger up. You're going to pluck strings one and two. So that's six and five because we're barred. Then hit string three and then put your pinky onto eight on string two. So we have pluck three, eight on two. Okay, let's try together. One, two, go. One, two, three. Nice. And if we try both together, it makes a little bit more sense in the context. Okay, so keep it steady with quarters. So here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Nice. So that is ending number two. So again, you just want to keep in mind that you're going to play A melody twice. The second time, the last two bars, I subbed out the new ending that we just learned. So it's literally that simple. So again, with this tune, what you want to work on is just start slow and piece it together, one bar into the next bar, and then practice those, and then try third bar into the fourth bar, and then practice those, and then one through four. So use the same approach that we do with learning all of these videos. And then once you get comfortable at a slower tempo, start to gradually boost it up. Keep your goal in mind that 160 is a really good uh, beat per minute to aim for. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our next melody. And our next melody uh, it goes more so into traditional finger picking and traditional strumming. So it's a little bit more straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and play just the first couple bars of it, and then we're gonna break it down and learn it. Okay, so that's what the first couple sound like. So remember that chorus shape that we talked about, right? The B flat. All we're going to do for this one is we're going to move it down. Now, the first time you play this, the first couple bars of this B melody, this is measure 11 and 12 on the tab. You actually don't need to do it as a, as a partial bar like we did the B flat, but when it comes up again for measure number uh, 15 and 16, you, 
can see that we're going to be transitioning from this B, I'm sorry, from this G5 into a regular G. So we will have to do the partial bar later on. But for right now, you can do it just as on a fingertip, so it doesn't matter. Or if you want to practice the partial bar, you can by all means go ahead. But for this one, same fingering, two, three, five, open G. So we're gonna go strum four, one, four, one. That's our first measure for the B melody or measure 11 on the tab. So very simple, strum four, one, four, one. So let's give it a shot. One, two, and three. So very easy, right? Now the next measure, we're gonna go down, down, up, followed by two mutes two down up mutes. So one, two, and down up. Now watch that left hand. What did it do during the mutes? It moved up the neck back into position of the B flat five, right? So this B melody is literally just bouncing between the B flat five and the G five. That's literally all it's doing. So if I actually play a little bit of it, you can see that in action. So you can see I'm just going from one chord to the next chord. And that's literally all it's doing for the first part. So I want you to keep in mind that as we play through, that you want to move your hand up during the muted strums. Remember with muted strums, all you have to do is lightly touch the strings and keep strumming. So let's do this. Let's try that 12th measure, which again is just one, two, and down up with the mutes, but move your hand up so that it goes into position for the B flat five. So here we go, measure 12. One, two, and three, and. Okay, you can see that I kept the chord shape intact, right? So I didn't do any crazy hand repositioning. So I'm just touching the strings to mute it, keeping that chord shape intact, so I can slide right back up to B flat five. So one thing you can practice too is going G five to B flat five. And you can put that into any time frame to practice, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it's just good uh, practice for getting muscle memory down because it's hard to move fingers up the neck without them going into different frets, right? Once you get that down though, anything like this becomes really easy. So keep that in mind. Don't move the fingers, move the entire hand at the same time. So each finger moves in unison. Okay, so let's backtrack. 11 into 12 sounds like this. Okay, let's try. One, two, and three, and. Cool. Going into measure number 13, which is out of our B flat five, sounds like this. Okay, so this one, make the B flat five, we're gonna go down, down, up, and then at this point, get rid of the pinky, put that ring finger down on seven, and strum down again. So we have one, two, and three. Down, down, up, down. Okay. So one, two, and three. Let's give it a shot. One, two, three. Okay, at this point, we're gonna still be playing out of this B flat, but what we're going to do is lift the ring finger up and we're going to go back into plucking. So we're gonna pluck one and two, which is six and five, then play string three, and then eight on string two. So we have pluck three, eight on two, Okay, let's try that, it's all quarters. One, two, three. One, two, three. Nice. And if we try those two together, one, two, and three, one, two, go. Nice. Not too hard, right? So if we backtrack, if we try those four measures together, 11, 12, 13, 14, sounds like this. One, two, and three. Okay, so big key thing to take away is when you're doing the mutes going up, keep the chord or the fingerings in shape of that chord. So moving on to the next half of this, 
it's going to sound like this. Here's the next two bars. Okay, so first thing we notice is that the 15th measure is identical to the 11th measure. So you're back to G5, and you're going to go strum 4, 1, 4, 1. So very simple. Let's move on to the 16th. So this is where we change. So remember I said that we will see the partial bar come into play, and that's where it happens, measure number 16. So at this point, you're going to lift your pinky up and do a partial bar chord. So it's the basic G chord, right? We're doing it with the index finger acting as a partial bar. So you're going to go strum three one. So different this time. Strum three one, followed up with two mutes. And the same concept as we do the mutes, we move up and then we're going to go back into position for B flat five. Okay, so take a look at that. One more time. Strum three one, mute, mute, and then position. Flat five. So let's try 16 together. So we have, okay, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, if we backtrack, 15 into 16. Remember, 15 is the same as 11. So we have one, two, and three, and. Nice. Last two measures for B melody sound like this. Okay, so the first measure is going to be all staccato hits. So we want it to be ba, 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 all quarter notes, but ba, 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 staccato them. One, two, three. So anytime you do a staccato, it's basically you play the note, but you lift pressure up off the note. So don't lift all the way up, but you play the note and you lift pressure up and it cuts the note short. So you can start with just one string like that, but eventually you want to apply that same concept to chords, but the same thing happens. So if I strum it, I just have to lift up as if I was going into a muted strum attack. That's all it is. One, pop, pop. So we have one, two, three. So we're doing three staccato hits for this measure. So back to the B flat five, one, and you can do a, a basic strum or the rascal strum, up to you. One, but the other two, I think I would pluck. I think it sounds cool. So you're gonna pluck it again and then get rid of the pinky, puts the ring finger down on seven. So you have strum, pluck, pluck. So strum, pluck, pluck. So eight, 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 seven. And that's it. Let's try it together. One, two, three. Nice. Now, as you go into the next, the final measure, the next measure, let's go back to sustaining it. So at this point, we're gonna lift the ring finger up, we're gonna strum from three down, then play string three, and then eight on string two. So same movements we've seen before. Strum, three, eight on two. So putting that together, pa, pa, da, strum, three, two. Okay, let's try those two together. One, two, three. Nice. If we backtrack, let's try the last four together. So 15, 16, 17, 18. One, two, go. Cool. And Let's try all of melody B, so all eight bars. One, two, three. Cool, so that's the basic gist of it. But you can see that as we demo through it, it sounds a little bit lacking any kind of emotion. So let's talk about that really quick. So with this piece, you can play a lot with accenting and dynamics to give it a little bit of a human touch. So for example, if I play the first measure, I may start with a 
accent of the first hit, so it would just strum it harder. Then I can follow beat two and three with plucking softer. Right? As I go into the second measure, I'm going to, again, start with the same accented hit on beat one, but I may continue playing louder, and I may do a bit of a dynamic swell up. So I may play beats two and three swelling up and then keep that higher volume for measure three. So you can hear, for example, right, I, I kept it at the higher intensity for measure three. As I go into measure four, I might die it back down a little bit. So that sounds like. And it just gives it a cool kind of approach. So we have accenting, we have dynamics, which is uh, volume changes, low to high, swelling and decreasing. And there's so many ways that you can approach it. And I guess this is just one example of what you guys can do as you work through it. But definitely don't play it where it's just... stays completely stagnant, right? So think, uh, experiment a little bit with uh, different things that you can do. Accenting, dynamics is definitely really, really cool. Doing raschiato strums, doing basic strums, I know all of that stuff really helps to add a bit of color to your playing. Now, as we go into our, our uh, last little home run uh, stretch, this is melody C. Melody C is only six bars in length, so it's a bit of a change from the others. And it's basically just doing some chord walk-ups. It's kind of cool sounding, but it's gonna be a great way to climax the song and take us back to the A melody. So here's what the first part sounds like. Okay, so those are the first two bars. You can hear it's the same approach for both bars. So start with the basic F. You're going to strum that, and then we have a repetitive picking pattern which is three, two, four, one. So I have strum, three, two, four, one. Now, going into the next measure, we have E7, so just the stock basic E7. And you may want to experiment, again, talking about ways to add color to your playing. You may want to pluck this, so you can pluck all four. Usually when I play it, I like to pluck four, two, and one. But it's up to you, you can pluck all four, or you can pluck four, two, and one and then you follow up with the same picking. Three, two, four, one. So I have F, strum, three, two, four, one, E7, pluck, three, two, four, one. So let's try that together. One, two, three. Cool, very simple. At this point, lift the middle finger up, move both fingers half fret up, so you're on two and three. We just have a basic A minor with, well, actually it's an altered A minor because we have the ring on the third fret of string one. But again, we can pluck and then follow up with the same picking approach. Three, two, four, one. Okay, so if we backtrack, let's try those three bars together. So we're F, E7, A minor. One, two, and three, and strum. From here, the last chord that we're going to go to is going to use the index finger, move the index finger up a half step and take that ring finger and go up a whole step. So if you think A minor is where we left off, this is going up a half, this is going up a whole, but you gotta move them in unison. So you're on three, open, open, five. And we're gonna do the same approach, right? So pluck, three, two, four, one. So you may want to just practice the last chord transition because it's probably a new chord shape. So going from the A minor, moving up a half with the index, a whole with the ring. One, two, three, four. Again, you can put it into a timing context like that, half notes to practice the muscle memory. Okay, but if we backtrack, let's see if we can try all four bars together. One, two, and three, and... To finish up, the last two measures sound like this. So 
So you can hear retardando comes into play. So we left off with the ring finger already on the fifth fret. So all we have to do is lift that index finger up. We don't need it anymore. We're going to pluck the first string, which is the fifth fret, plus the open E. And let the E ring out. And we're just going to slide up to sev. We're going to walk down now. So we're going to go backwards with the ring to five. And then the middle finger can play three. So we have slide to seven, back to five, and then to three. So one, two, three. But on this measure is where you want to apply the retardando. So keep that in mind, but we'll put that into use in a second. So one, two, three. Let's give it a shot. Ready, go. One, two, three. Now at this point, we're going to go down a half step with the middle. So you're on second fret of string one. Add the index finger to second fret of string three. I want you to strum down. We're creating a G6 in this, uh, this chord shape. So we're gonna strum three down, two, zero, two. But here's the kicker. You're gonna do a pull off with the middle finger to the open A. So it looks like that. So strum, pull off, and then end with the ring playing three on string two. Okay, you have one, two, three. So keeping quarter note intact. One, two, three, one, two, three. Let me get that thing to ring out better, that pull off. Sounds like that. So let's see if we can try that together. So those two measures. One, two, three. Now, you do want to add a little retardando just to give it um, a kind of a, a, a end to the climax. So you can think of the first four bars as the build up, the climax build up. And this takes us back down, this resolves us, and this brings us home. So the last thing too you want to keep in mind is we're gonna fermata, which means hold out that last note, that third fret on string two. So to give you an idea of the context at, at the correct tempo, we have. And so forth. So you can hear it's just a beautiful build up at that quick tempo, then a nice gradual decline with the with the fermata for the last note, hold as long as you wish, then back to the A melody. So it's a great build up and then taking us back to the A. So let's try this, let's try all of melody C and we'll put a little retardando for the last two. So here we go, one, two, and three. So at that point, you're back into the A melody, and you're going to play the same six bars as the first time that we learned the A melody in this video. So that's the first six bars. So when you get to the B flat, so that's basically where the change happens. When you get to the B flat, we have just an alternate ending as a way to close the song strong. Sounds like this. So go ahead and make the B flat five and keep it as the partial bar. We're gonna do the rascato strum. Now here's the difference. We're gonna do this strum and we're gonna hold it for a beat and a half. So we have one and two. Now on the end of two, you're gonna play seven on string one. So get rid of the pinky and then five. So one and two and three. So a little bit tricky with that rhythm because it's a dotted quarter for the first hit. One and three. So it sounds like that. One, two, and three. So hitting on one, hitting on the end of two, and hitting on three. One and three. But it's a catchy one you can sing. Da, da, da. Okay, so let's see if we can try that. One, two, three. 
Okay, from here, you're going to take that pinky, put it on eight on string two, pluck the open G, so same stuff we saw before. This time around, hold it for two beats, so it's a half note, one, two, and then play string one, which is still barred. So we have one, two, three. Okay, let's try that. One, two, three. One, two, three. Putting it together. So definitely, da, 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 da. Sing it. If you can sing it, you can play it. So us together. One, two, three. Cool. To end the song, just go to the C chord. You can pluck the basic C. And then we're going to do a harmonic, an artificial harmonic using the plucked method. So for this technique, I'm literally just going to be playing an octave up from where I'm fretting. So if I'm fretting the third fret, I'm going to be playing third plus 12, which is 15. So I'm going to be plucking the harmonic on the 15th fret, which is my last dot on the fretboard. And I'm going to be using this little pluck approach. Now this pluck approach, if you're new to creating harmonics this way, it's taught in complete detail in our harmonics course. So you can learn how to do three ways of creating harmonics 100% free. So I'd encourage you to go through that course because it's gonna take you step by step and teach you the mechanics behind doing this technique plus two more. So if you're new to it, definitely check out that course to learn the mechanics behind doing it. But let's do this. Let's wrap up this lesson by playing the last four measures, which sound like... Okay, so let's try together. One, two, three. All right, guys, so that's the entire tune. So again, this is a really great lesson for that intermediate player. You know, we had the piccato picking technique, we had the rosciato, so there were some cool techniques thrown into the mix as well, some traditional finger picking and strumming and the muted strums, the staccato hits, talked a little bit about dynamics and accenting. So a, a really great lesson for the intermediate player. So I do wanna remind you, if you want to get the tabs to print off and keep for your records, that was available at this link or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for wonder don't forget too on that page is the interactive on-screen tab viewer so you can hit play you can watch the tab scroll across in real time highlight bars loop sections slow it down all that fun jazz so guys again i hope you enjoyed this lesson and i will see you in the next one take care